welcome back everybody we are on our journey our trek across the vast expanse of proverbs and we are going to be in chapter 26 today we are 26 chapters in folks there are only 31 chapters in all of proverbs and so we will be finished in just a few weeks with our um with our deep dive into this incredible book of wisdom. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. If you do have a biblical question, you have a subject you'd like addressed, you have a question you'd like answered, uh, podcast at breadbreakers.com, podcast at breadbreakers.com. You can hit us up there. Um, we are going to be diving into chapter 26. There's a lot said here about those that are foolish, those that are sluggards. We have talked a lot about this, obviously, in 25 chapters leading up to this. So we're just going to hit these scriptures as they are, rather than going into a whole bunch of point scriptures from other places and putting stuff together. Because these are themes we've already hit quite a lot before. Now we're going to go through the entire chapter and especially toward the end, there are some other things uh, dealt with. But again, most of this, by the time you're 25 chapters in, most topics, most things are, it's it's like review. It's coming back and hitting something another way. It's another proverb to really nail, um, put the nail in the coffin, so to speak, or to hit home um, on a specific topic. So don't be surprised if we don't do a whole lot of you know, taking three or four verses and doing a whole podcast on that one thing. You can go back. There's been lots of uh, episodes leading up to this one. And so I encourage everyone to go and check those out. And again, hit us up with questions or if you'd like something addressed. I am currently in the ESV. That's what I'm reading. So if you have a different version, might be a little bit, you know, different wording, but should be the, uh, should be the gist if you're in one of the kind of standard major versions of the of the scriptures. Here we go. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 1. Like snow in summer or rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. Like a sparrow in its flitting, like a swallow in its flying, a curse that is causeless does not alight. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the back of fools. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him yourself. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. Whoever sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off his own feet and drinks violence. Like a lame man's legs, which hang useless, is a proverb in the mouth of fools. Like one who binds the stone in the sling is one who gives honor to a fool. Like a thorn that goes up into the hand of a drunkard is a proverb in the mouth of fools. Like an archer who wounds everyone is one who hires a passing fool or drunkard. <laughs> like a dog that returns to his vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. Do you see a man who is wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Now that's 12 verses in, and then it switches gears here in verse 13 and starts going into uh, some some choice things to say about the sluggard. So let's uh, let's go back. Let's look at some of these. Obviously, the Bible does not have a lot of good uh, to say about foolish people, and. Foolish is not in the eyes of the beholder. There, there are certain elements of uh, uh, character and attitude toward things and stuff that make someone, quote-unquote, scripturally foolish. Now, uh, somebody might say, oh, that person's a fool. You know, they don't know some pop culture thingamajig that's going on. Uh, they're, not, they're not in on the, you know, the current... Uh, the current sway of the day, the current milieu of uh, pop culture, or uh, what what the, what the political winds are are driving at nowadays. 
All that stuff is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about scriptural foolishness and thus the kind of fool that is a fool in the eyes of God. That's the kind we're going to we're going to talk about uh and what the scriptures deal with. So, let's let's look at some of this, okay? There are some of the, those descriptive um verses right here in uh in in this passage. So, like snow and summer, rain and harvest, so is honor not fitting for a fool. Verses like this talk about uh how 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 it, it it's painful even sometimes to be around to try to uh, win over a fool to try and make a fool wise this isn't saying that people are just born a fool and you can't grow wise the bible does talk often about growing in wisdom so the foolish person does not want to grow in wisdom they do not want to be corrected they don't want to grow they well, for whatever reason now there could be a thousand different reasons why someone wants to uh, hold to whatever opinion they might have, whatever thought process they may have, whatever um, ideas they may have about, and again, fill in the blank, name the topic, okay, about spiritual things, about family, about health, about whatever it might be, about how human beings really act and how they really are. Uh, there's a lot of foolishness in all of these areas and many more. So someone who is Ignorant isn't the same as a fool. An ignorant person uh, that just doesn't know because they haven't, they don't have the information, they have, they don't have the experience. They can, they can get the information, they can get the experience, and they can, they can go from ignorant to knowledgeable. This is talking about wise, and we've, we've talked about it already, right? I love the Spurgeon quote about, you know, there's no, there's not so great a fool as a knowing fool, somebody who actually has information and knows stuff, but they are still foolish, because wisdom is the right use of knowledge. Um, and first and foremost, it's allowing truth to shape us, not us trying to shape the truth. So there's lots of scriptures about how kind of painful and how, uh, this, you know, <laughs> being around a fool or, you know, being a fool or trying to do this for a fool is like this other thing. So this opens up with one of these, um, talks about how the whip it's for the horse, the bridles for the donkey, and a rod is for the back of fools. Um, sometimes people just, they're just not going to get it. They're just not going to get it. Uh, a horse, as good as the horse may be, it is an animal, and th there, there may need to be some reins on that thing. Uh, there might need to be some checks and balances on people uh, in general, but especially on those who are foolish. They make foolish decisions. They are just foolish, again, scriptural fools. And so there you have it. Answer Now, these two verses are interesting because at, at first glance, it's kind of like, wait a minute, is he contradicting himself here? Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him yourself. Okay. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. Wait, what? Am I supposed to not answer a fool or answer a fool according to his folly? And this is a, uh, apparently this is a, um, a fancy term is a parallelism, but it's kind of putting these two things parallel to each other. And it's a way of, of showing or teaching a concept. And I think, again, in, in the Hebrew, um, in, the, in the Hebrew kind of vein of language and back when this was written in that culture. One way they did things is with these kinds of kind of parallels. Um, so let's let's read it carefully though, because even if you didn't know that or you didn't think about that, or even if that's not even true, uh, you can look and see there is a difference here. Answer not a fool according to his folly. Answer a fool according to his folly. Now the writer obviously is not contradicting themselves in literally the next verse. What do they mean here? One way you can take it is they're just contradicting themselves. I think that's a little ridiculous, again, right here. And, you know, the scriptures do not have contradictions. Uh, but if you say, well, I think the scriptures might have contradictions. They don't, but okay. Do you think the same writer literally picked up his, wrote a comma, for instance, pick, picked up the, uh, the, the writing utensil and put the utensil back down again and immediately contradicted themselves? I, I mean, come on, what are the chances of something like that? 
But let's read it carefully. Answer not a fool according to his folly. Why? Lest you be like him yourself. Then it says, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. And so it's talking about a couple of different situations here. One is not getting dragged down into foolishness un unless you become a fool. So there are times where you don't want to get into that conversation, get into that argument, get pulled into some situation. Because all it's going to do is make you more foolish. It's going to just... It's not going to end well <clears throat> uh, or, or, or whatever. Then the next one says, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. So there are times that even though the fool may not grow, may not listen, may not take the correction, it, it still might be important to throw out that answer so that they don't start thinking, they're wise, even though they're a fool. Oh, see, nobody in the room has an answer. I knew I was correct. Um, in that case, especially if it's a weighty situation, it's something that maybe other people can be damaged by this if this person starts thinking that they're correct or other people think this person's correct, whatever it is. Uh, you might have to go ahead and answer them, even if you know this person's a fool. They are not going to receive this. They're not going to look at this. They're not going to be corrected, whatever it is. So I think it's pretty clear that it's two different types of situations. In some situations, you're, you, you really just shouldn't answer. You, you just shouldn't. And then in other times, you should. Uh, in the New Testament, Paul talks about not getting, not getting, you know, kind of sucked into, uh, you know, these vain arguments, not getting sucked into things where it's just, you know, th there's no point. Um, avoid oppositions to things that are falsely called science, right? He tells Timothy, uh, there's just sometimes you don't want to get you don't get want to get pulled into a a debate or an issue or something like that. But there's other times that it needs something needs to be addressed. And of course, Paul himself, who's who's told others not to get sucked into some of these meaningless conversations, takes whole chapters, maybe even a whole epistle, to address a specific problem and issue. Again, we need to be wise, and we need to try and kind of sort of pick our battles. <laughs> I'll give you some examples. Um, names have been changed, uh, of course, to protect the innocent and the guilty. Um, but I've over over the years, right, studying the studying the Word of God, uh, talking with people, doing Bible studies. Yes, sometimes even getting into sort of heated conversations with people because when someone believes something, they believe they're right, especially on like a spiritual matter. Sometimes people get really heated in that discussion. They're not looking at the Word of God and saying, you know, wow, this is an awesome opportunity for me to learn and grow if I'm wrong. Instead, they're like, no, this is my stake in the ground, and I have to be right. That's a dangerous place to be. But I've seen this in, in on both sides, where something gets addressed. Maybe it takes someone time, weeks, months, to really come around and realize, wow, I was wrong. This is what the Word says or I didn't know this before. Maybe I didn't have an opinion on it, but I, I didn't know this before. And then I've seen the other side where people just simply will not bend themselves to line up with Scripture. Sometimes people will, I mean, circular reasoning, uh, just jumping from one topic to another. You can't really pin somebody down to, hey, well, let, let's talk about that verse later. What about this verse right here? Or not not even necessarily verse, like, or I'm on this topic. Now I want to jump to this topic. What about that topic? It's like, oh, hold on. Let, let's stay right here. You know, what you just said, the scripture contradicts that. What do you think? Well, I just think that, you know, um, sometimes it's opinion. It's a I feel kind of thing. Uh, there, there's just, there's lots of different reasons and, and, and kind of uh, motivations behind People not wanting to align with Scripture. I've had them. You have them. I mean, everybody has these things, right? Uh, there are there are many, many, many reasons why we might hold to a belief. We we grew up with that. That's that was our first exposure to a specific topic, and so we kind of lean that way. We just have to be open to being corrected by truth. Now, I'm talking scriptural truth, but this holds for you know we did this series on 
um, on the economy and stuff, economic truth. There are certain economic truths. There are certain truths about family life. There are certain truths about human behavior, right? Humans just don't operate that way. Okay, I'll just throw it out there, right? Uh, I believe it was Winston Churchill that said, if you are, I'm paraphrasing, you know, exactly word for word, but, it, you know, if you're not a, um, a liberal or uh, kind of a leftist at 20, you have no heart. But if you're not a conservative by 40, you have no brains. What was his point? His point is when you're young and idealistic and all this stuff, a, a, a leftist, a, a socialist, a, you know, this utopian um, way of living where we all just, we're all just come together as the collective and we're all everything, we all just are one and we, you know, we, from each according to his ability to each according to his need and, you know, workers of the world unite and all this stuff, all these slogans that don't actually work. Um, they sound great. Utopia sounds fantastic until you realize by the time you're 40, it's actually dystopia. It's a nightmare situation because human beings don't behave that way. If there's any power to be had, any people will now try to get into that position, be the one in control. We are not just all a bunch of stoic, just let's just all get along. You can have a thousand people and if 999 of them are that way, and you got the one person that's not, it's not going to work, okay? So that's one just easy, quick example of where we have to grow in knowledge and wisdom, and it's something that's not spiritual. It's just understanding things like human nature, the reality of human nature, right? There's a reality of gravity. There's a, there's a reality of, um, you know, the, this whole notion today, well, you can be anything you want to be. No, I mean, you can't, right? If, if you fall over and faint every time you see blood, can you really be a surgeon? You kind of have to, I mean, really work on overcoming that first, right? <clears throat> I mean, I don't know, me personally, again, I don't think I could ever be a NBA superstar. I'm just not physically, I'm, you know, 5'10", <laughs> okay? Okay, are there guys that are that short? Yeah, but they've got incredible natural gifting and ability that they've they've also honed, really honed in on, really focused on, really perfected. Um, so again, we we just have to. There, there's a wisdom and a learning that comes from just observing truth and accepting the truth. Now, getting back to scripture, which is where we are, which is what this is, the most important thing, right? Our eternity. Uh, the things that really matter, we need to be people who are able to learn, grow, and develop in uh, in the things of God. And that means being corrected. And I've been corrected. I've been, you know, helped to see things differently. Uh, I, things that I even was I, I was correct on, but, w but how to approach it, how to think about it, how to uh, maybe even better relay it to others, I, grown tremendously over even just the last three to five years. We have to be able to do that. So on and on and on it goes. Uh, if you send a message by the hand of a fool, okay, come on, don't do it, right? It's like lame legs, right? They hang, they hang loose, they hang looseless, useless, right? That's a proverb in the mouth of fools. They, they don't learn. They don't, they're not going to learn from wisdom because they're a fool. Uh, so it just goes on and on and on. And then it's interesting where it says, <clears throat> Like a dog that returns to his vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. It's gross, right? Ugh, bad for you. What are you doing? But they do it anyway. And so the fool, and you can see this in, in people. You see patterns in people. They even know. I've been at lunch with people or, you know, after a service talking to somebody or whatever, right? They have a, a breakthrough, you know, Christian lingo, or they have a breakthrough, they, they, they pray through, or they have a they have a realization. Um, pow the power of God just moves mightily in a service or there's an amazing, you know, ministry and preaching and they just, pff, the light goes on. They have revelation from the word. And they're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I've been in this cycle for so long, and now I see what the issue is. And then three months later, they're right back at it. 
and you're just like, what is going on? Well, this, this is what's going on. Even though people might know it's wrong, they see it's bad, they are foolish, and they continue to repeat and repeat and repeat the, uh, the issues or not change their behaviors, way of thinking, uh, to be able to get out of that cycle. So, do you see a man who's wise in his own eyes? There's more hope for a fool than for him. So at the end, it kind of rounds out and says, hey, by the way, people that think they're right all the time, that they, I am, I am the arbiter of truth. Even 11 verses of talking about how terrible a fool is, even a fool has got more hope than that person. <laughs> they're like the foolish of the fool. And of course, most fools, I'm just going to say it, most people who are foolish like this, scriptural fool, they they do believe they're right, and they're not going to change. Uh, then it kind of shifts gears here. Verse 13 says, the sluggard says there's a lion in the road, there's a lion in the streets, there's always some excuse, right? There's always some excuse. Uh, As a door turns on its hinges, so does a sluggard on his bed. This is verse 14. You know, just kind of doesn't want to, doesn't want to get out there, doesn't want to work, doesn't want to. Verse 15 the sluggard buries his hand in the dish. It wears him out to bring it back to his mouth. Uh, the sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. <laughs> right? You ever you ever have that where it's like somebody who's completely unsuccessful, somebody can, can barely pay their bills. They're they're constantly from job to job. They never really seem to get their feet under them. That, but when you get into a conversation with them, it's like they know everything. It's like, hey, have you ever thought about trying this? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. It's like, okay. <laughs> if you know so much, then how come you're in such a, you know, sorry state? It's a very interesting observation. So, again, it just goes on and on and on about the sluggard and the, the scriptures we've already read and talked about and gone through about having a solid work ethic, about... Uh, being someone who sort of just takes the bull by the horns, right? And and you get out there and you you do it. You learn, you grow, you develop, you roll with the punches, you learn how to take a hit, you learn how to uh, see things not work out like you wanted or like you anticipated, like you expected. Maybe there were factors outside of your control or whatever. And so you you're able to to shift, you're able to be resilient. And uh, a lot again, that a lot of it takes work, and a sluggard it doesn't want to put in the work. They don't want to put in the work. Now, a spiritual sluggard is the same way. Uh, goes hand in hand with the fool. They don't want to put in the work. They don't want to have to. They don't want to, you know, everybody else do it for me. And this kind of attitude mentality, it does permeate. It does get into people, into families, into whole congregations. And it's something that needs to be uh, uh, worked on and weeded out. People have to come to themselves and be like, you know what? I'm tired of being this way. And for some people that happens, and for some it actually does not. So there you go. So verse 17 says, whoever meddles in a quarrel, not his own, is like one who takes a passing dog by the ears. Again, sometimes you just want to mind your own business, you know, not get sucked into things. Verse 18, like a madman who throws firebrands, arrows, and death is the man who deceives his neighbor and says, I'm only joking. Uh, the Bible has a lot to say about lying, a lot to say about being deceptive. And so just because you try to cover it up with, oh, I was only kidding, that doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So let's be honest. Let's be truthful. Let's be you know people of integrity. Verse 20, for lack of wood, the fire goes out. And where there is no whisperer, quarreling ceases as charcoal to hot embers and wood to fire so is a quarrelsome man for kindling strife the words of a whisperer are like delicious morsels (coughs) they go down into the inner parts of the body so gossip Tailbearing, if you're reading the uh, the King James or one of those types of versions, but 
gossips are deadly. Gossips are horrible. Gossips, gossip is, is a terrible thing. Uh, gossips, people who love to, you know, whisper, people who love to stir stuff up, people who love, you know, to get things going, talking about people, even if it's true. Now, sometimes something is true, but is it helpful for you to be sitting around talking about this? You know, just beating somebody down, they're not even present, you're just like, talking them down, talking them down. It's really not. It's really not. It hurts you, it hurts the people you're talking to. It help. It hurts. Uh, like, let's say you're in a family and you've got children, and they're constantly hearing you uh, bash people, hurt people, talk negative about people. It has a tremendous impact on them. Um, and so, again, the the scriptures, multiple verses right here, just talking about these things. The scriptures do not um, speak very kindly of people who are gossips. And of course. I mean, you get to the New Testament, it is just, I mean, uh, just blasts people who are gossips. And so we need to be people who are not. And the way you stop gossip is you stop gossip, right? You don't do it, and you don't allow people to do it around you. It's that simple. It's so easy. A gossiper needs somebody to be listening. I, you know, I guess they could start a podcast, nothing, about, nothing but gossip, but uh, probably wouldn't go very far. So... Uh, verse 23, like the glaze covering an earthen vessel are fervent lips with an evil heart. Whoever hates disguises himself with his lips and harbors deceit in his heart. When he speaks graciously, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Though his hatred be covered with deception, his wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Whoa. Yikes. Um, but this gets to this gets to something, right? Whoever hates, I think I think it's interesting that people have this almost like knee-jerk reaction to expect that people are not deceitful, to expect that people are not. Uh, they, they just say who they are and that's how they are. But how many people are really like that? Uh, we, we need to, we really need to be leery of talk and look more at actions. We need to realize that people, all people are people, right? I know that's just a huge mind-blowing revelation. But at bottom, we are all sinners, and we are all capable of all kinds of things. And so we shouldn't be so quick just to believe what somebody says or believe the persona that someone puts out there. This is how so many people are deceived by like political leaders or business people or whatever it is. We, we need to, especially when they are deceitful, especially when they're flattering and deceitful, especially when they tell us things that we want to hear, um, Dangerous combination. Dangerous combination. But for us to think that someone who uh, has hate in their heart, evil uh, intent, that they're going to just be obvious, that they're just going to be out there saying, hey, I have hate in my heart, I have evil intent, here we go. No. Disguising themselves, saying the right things, uh, putting on the show, this is very common. This is when he speaks graciously, believe him not, why? Because there are seven abominations in his heart. But he's speaking so graciously. He's telling me what I want to hear. It sounds so nice. It sounds so wonderful. But look at the fruit. Look at the actions. Look at look deeper than sort of what you hear, what you see right there on the surface. So we do need to be careful of that. I think that's a good just way to be in life. Be cautiously optimistic, maybe. Um, be a little bit suspicious. Not you're, you're, you, you don't trust anyone for anything. You, you, you're not really going to get very far in life like that. Uh, but we do need to uh, we do need to have sort of a, a cautious optimism or a cautious hopefulness in people. We hope that that person said that and it's true, but we're going to check up, right? <laughs> that that really needs to be our the way we we roll because then we won't be as susceptible 
to those who deceive and are are you know of evil or wicked intent. So just a little food for thought there. Verse 27, Proverbs 26 and 27 says, Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and a stone will come back on him who, who starts it rolling. So here we have this idea that, you know, ultimately, especially, people will sort of get what's coming to them. There is justice, there's cosmic justice. Uh, even in this life, many times uh, when when you have people that are uh, that are doing wickedly, they are wicked people. They are evil. They are um, you know, a lot of times that does come back on people. Even in this life, there there is a there is an element of just. You're you're going to get that. You're going to have that that sort of judgment and justice even in this life. Many times, now not all the time, right? For us to think that all all the time somebody gets their their comeuppance, uh, that is not the that is not the truth. Sometimes people are evil and wicked all their days, and they die in the quote unquote lap of luxury with all their ill gotten gains. But guess what? Eternally, they will be sorry that wickedness was the path they chose. So we need to be careful, but we need to realize that, you know, you dig a pit, you're going to fall in. <laughs> uh, so let's be people that don't dig pits and roll stones. Let's be people that are uh, people of integrity, encouragers, people who are um, after the benefit of others, and that kind of attitude. Verse 28, last uh, verse of this chapter, a lying tongue hates its victims and a flattering mouth works ruin. So kind of rounding it out there, but talking again about uh, lying, flattering, you know, f deceptive flattery, right? Uh, these are things that God absolutely hates. We, we, we have to see that deception, lying. Now, again, may make for a great politician. <laughs> okay, I don't have anything against someone just because they're a politician, but the, the fact of the matter is many politicians, this is how they operate, lies and flattery, right? Telling people what they want to hear, uh, you know, vote for me and I'll be like Santa Claus. I'll give you all these wonderful things. All Everything, you know, everything's going to happen great. There's going to be sunny days and uh, you know, flowing milk and honey, and you know, and how are how are they how are you going to deliver this? Well, I mean, just trust me. Vote for me, and then find out. And it's amazing to me how people fall for it time and time again. They, they will people will hear what they want to hear. They will hear again. I'm just going to go with the politician right now. They will hear somebody say this for for two decades. And they, they never actually see any positive change. In fact, a lot of times things get worse. And yet, they will still go and vote that person in. Why? Because at the end of the day, people like flattery. People like that promise. People like being told, oh, it's not your fault. It's this boogeyman over here. They're the ones to blame. And now, let's if you vote for me, we'll, make, we'll punish them and make them pay. And then you'll be off the hook. That actually appeals to the baser, sinful human element, the human nature that we are, and this is why so many people do it. People wouldn't lie as much if it didn't get them places, right? You know, people say cheaters never prosper. Yeah, again, ultimately they don't prosper, and many times they get found out and they fall into their own pit. Uh, but people wouldn't lie if there wasn't some kind of immediate gratification or immediate, you know, uh, benefit uh, in the moment, and so sometimes there is, and people wouldn't flatter other people if there weren't there, there weren't gains to be had, um, and sometimes there are. So we need to be people that realize that we can we can accept the truth of that, and also accept the truth that God hates this kind of flattery and lying. So we decide we're going to be people of truth. Now that doesn't mean. Okay, well, I'm not going to flatter you. Yeah, you look fat in that. that <laughs> mm, no, right? There's also wisdom in how we approach things, how we, how we speak truth. 
Um, and also, it's wise not to get sucked into certain conversations. So, uh, we're going to just end it right there. Next time around, we should be on chapter 27. We are getting so close to uh, wrapping this thing up. So, I uh, hope you're sticking with us and enjoying the book of Proverbs once again. Hit us up at podcast.com. Uh, podcast.com. Now, that might be difficult. We probably won't get that. Podcast at breadbreakers.com is the email for sort of the mailbag podcast questions. If you would like to uh, have your questions answered or a specific topic sort of dealt with, definitely hit us up there. And until next time, God bless you, love you, and, um, well, I guess I'll see you next time on the next podcast. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that content from Bread Breakers. If you enjoyed the content, give us that thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions on future content or anything like that, don't forget to leave us a comment in the comment section. Also, subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way, every time we put out something new, a new video, a new interview, whatever it might be, you will be notified. We will throw some additional videos and playlists up here on the screen. And as always, God bless you. We'll catch you on the next video.